Good morning, dear students. In the previous video, we talked about Ramayan and how Ramayan uh, is divided into seven uh, chapters or episodes. And all these episodes are in Hindi are called Kand. So I also named all the Kands: Bal Kand, Ayodhya Kand, Krishna Kand, and other the seven. Now uh, we will start up today with the line by line analysis of the first. Kand or the first book that is titled Bal Kand. Now, in the recently introduced CBCS system in Bihar University, you have Bal Kand that is the book one to study, and uh, in the same one, and uh, in, the, in the major course. And uh, what you have to do is that you have to study from canto number one to canto number nineteen. So no worries because I am going to deal with all the line by line. analysis of all the cantos in detail so we will start with the invocation because before starting with the cantos the first thing is the invocation that comes in ramayan and uh, to be very precise it is the translated version of ramayan which has been translated by ralph t h griffith so we will be following the griffith translation of ramayan and we will be following it line by line so let's begin with the invocation so starting with book 1 and uh, invocation which uh, begins before all the cantos so this is the invocation and it is thought to be later incorporated in ramayan the original ramayan it was not present but it has been later incorporated in the book 1 now uh, because basically invocation is uh, what do you mean by invocation so invocation is a praise song an invoke uh, address to someone and here basically valmiki has been praised throughout the invocation when you will read you will come to understand that valmiki has been praised at long and length so why is valmiki being praised when he is writing uh, the ramayan himself so if i am going to write a book in the preface or in the introduction i am not going to praise myself so of course it is an introduction to the original ramayan and uh, which was later incorporated by the later writers and there have been many interpolations done in ramayan so this is also thought to be one of such interpolations and it is a later addition to the whole of ramayan where valmiki is praised as a poet as an adi kavi and uh, how ramayan originated and his way of thinking why he went on to writing ramayan and his poetic uh, endeavor as a poet is praised in this it is a very short uh, piece the invocation now you see i have these first first four lines in front of me as you can see on the screen and we have already discussed in the previous video that uh, ramayan is uh, written in shlokas it has got 24000 shlokas all together so every shlok comprises of four lines each and each line has got uh, or each line has been written in eight syllables so finally uh, either you can say two, uh, two two couplets of 16 16 syllables or one one line four lines each of eight eight syllables so here we have these first four lines the first shlok praise to valmiki bird of charming song so in the very first line valmiki is praised and he is praised and he is you know a metaphor is used because valmiki is compared to a bird a singing bird just like the birds compose beautiful songs in the same way valmiki is also composing a song singing a song that is ramayan and of course ramayan is a song because it is written in poetry form it is an epic so praise to valmiki bird of charming song who mounts on poesy's sublimest spray so where is Uh, valmiki seated valmiki is seated on a mountain and again a metaphor is used where mountain is being compared to poetry so if poetry is like a mountain on that valmiki is seated and from there he is spraying out just like a spring pours up from the mountain or a river comes out of a mountain in the same way valmiki's poetry is like that river or that spring which is rising up from that mountain so praise to valmiki bird of charming song who mounts on poesy's sublimest spray and sweetly sings with accent clear and strong so whatever valmiki is composing that songs those songs are clear and 
have very nice ascent and are very strong and whom do we do he praise so it is well evident fact that he praises ram so ram a ram is his deathlessly so till the time he reaches his death till the time he is on his death bed only one thing valmiki is doing he is repeatedly praising ram so ram is the protagonist of this uh, whole epic now we come to the next stanza or the next shlok where breathes the man can listen to the strain that flows in music from valmiki's tongue so valmiki's tongue from coming out from his mouth is a music this composition in the musical form and everyone any man who is breathing who is alive when he listens to that strain when he listens to this poetry it soothes the man nor feel his feet the path of bliss attain when ram's glory by the saint is sung so everyone when he hears the glory of ram which is sung by valmiki one is feel uh, one has this feeling uh, or this overwhelming feeling of being blessed everyone is blessed everyone attains a bliss a path of bliss when they hear the song of or the glory of ram the stream ramayan leaves its sacred fount so earlier also valmiki is said to be seated on a mountain so from that mountain is coming up pouring out this stream this uh, river and this river which is blowing this stream which is blowing again ramayana is being compared to a stream again a metaphor for ramayana where ramayana is seen as a stream a flowing river and this river when flows it is very sacred and it is coming out from a fountain which is very sacred and the whole world will come to witness the flowing of this river just like any sacred river or any river you know because river is so blessed any river because it uh, gives people water to drink and uh, if you see all the ancient civiliza civilizations developed near the banks of river because it is where uh, people can thrive and live it gives you life so what water is very much essential for life itself so here this water this stream this river is originating from the fountain that river is ramayan and when it flows in the world just like when any river flows it quenches the thirst of all the people in the same way when it will flow the whole wide world from sin and stain to free it will make the whole world free of sins आप अगर रामायण रूपी नदी में डुबकी लगाएंगे तो आप सारे पापों से मुक्त हो जाएंगे ऐसा कहना है इस रामायण कथा का द प्रिंस ऑफ हर्मिट्स इज द पेरेंट माउंट सो हु इज दिस प्रिंस ऑफ हर्मिट्स अगेन अ काइंड ऑफ ब्यूटिफाइड इमेज यूज फॉर वाल्मीकि सो वाल्मीकि इज द हेड और द chief of all the hermits all the sages and he is among he has got the highest pedestal among all these hermits and this prince of hermit is the parent mountain the main mountain and from there this ramayana is flowing and when this ramayana is flowing what is, happens any river will finally go and meet into the sea so this ramayana is also flowing in the form of a river and finally the sea that it will meet that sea is ram again a metaphor for ram so ram and sea are being compared the lordly ram is the darling sea so here it is not metaphor you can uh, you can say it is a simile because like uh, or is is used uh, then it becomes a simile so here again that river is ramayan and the sea is ram and when the river flows it finally meets the sea in the same way this ramayan strain goes and finally meets ram so whoever reads ramayan is benefited because he will be free from the sin and finally attain god finally attain ram now glory to him whose fame is ever bright glory to him prachetas holy son <coughs> so who is being glorified here glorifying uh, glorification is being done for valmiki valmiki's father's name was prachita so 
he is again praising the invocation whoever the poet was who has written the invocation he is praising valmiki <coughs> addressing him as prachetat son and saying that there should be fame to the person glory to the person who has written this beautiful piece called ramayan so glory to ramayan glory to valmiki and glory to prachetas holy son the most pious son of pracheta that is valmiki and why glory to him because whose pure lips quaff with ever new delight the nectar sea of deeds by ramdar why he is so praiseworthy uh, valmiki valmiki is so praiseworthy why because he has written from his lips from his mouths have been uttering these beautiful words this beautiful poetic strain which is the ram story and it is just like a nectar a sea full of nectar so again a metaphor where ramayan is being compared to a sea which is full of nectar amrit se bhara hua wo ek samudra hai jisme jo bhi gota lagayega uske sare paap dhul jayenge so ramayan is like a nectar sea of deeds and it glorifies the works the deeds of ram whatever ram has done throughout his life has been incorporated in the form of ramayan in this uh, book written by valmiki then hail arch ascetic pious good and kind again all the adjective adjectives used for valmiki so you must uh, have uh, glory for you you must hail you are an ascetic you are pious you are good you are kind hail saint valmiki lord of every lore so any story lore means story so any story which has been told the head of all the storytellers becomes valmiki because no story is as great as the story of ram so hail to saint valmiki hail to the great ascetic hail hori hermit calm and pure of mind so valmiki is a hermit a sage who has calm mind who is pure of mind and who is first of the bards in the previous video also i told you that valmiki is also considered as the adi kavi the first most important poet in the history of india so he is considered as the first of the bards bards is again a poet so he is one of the most important first of the bards and valmiki hail once more so again praise to valmiki so this whole shlok is basically praising valmiki and then with this we come to the end of the invocation so that is all in the invocation and basically again Uh, summing it up it is a praise song for valmiki where valmiki is being praised continuously endlessly for writing and composing ramayan and ramayan is considered as a sea a sea made up of nectar where anyone can dip and free oneself from the sins the sea is also compared to ram or the god himself that whenever a river flows it finally meets the sea in the same way whenever you uh, read ramayan and uh, you uh, uh, delve deep into the realms of ramayan you will finally attain god and you will finally attain ram so that is all about this uh, stanza of invocation the whole invocation and then in the next video we will begin begin with the canto 1 from balkan so thank you